In our first example, we're given the graph f of x equals x squared, and we're asked to use our knowledge of transformations, or translations, to sketch the graph of g of x equals f of the quantity x plus 3 minus 2 on the same coordinate plane provided. So here we have the graph of f of x. We also want to graph g of x on the same coordinate plane. Before we do this, let's review vertical and horizontal shifts of a function. Let's first talk about a vertical shift. Given f of x and g of x equals f of x plus d, where d is a constant, then if d is greater than zero or positive, then g of x is a vertical shift up d units from f of x. And if d is less than zero or negative, then g of x is a vertical shift down d units from f of x. Let's verify this with an animation. In red, we have the graph of f of x, and notice how if we have f of x plus a constant, the blue graph is shifted up from f of x. And if we have f of x minus a constant, the graph is shifted down from f of x. This verifies the vertical shift caused by the value of d. Now let's talk about a horizontal shift. Given f of x and g of x equals f of the quantity x plus c, Notice how here we have plus a constant inside the parentheses. Then if c is greater than zero, g of x is a horizontal shift left c units from f of x. So if we have plus a positive value here, the graph is shifted left, maybe the opposite direction of what we might think. And then if c is less than zero or negative, meaning we have x minus a constant inside the parentheses, then g of x is a horizontal shift right c units from f of x. Again, maybe the opposite direction we might think. Let's verify this with our animation. So if we have f of the quantity x plus a constant, notice how the graph is shifted left. And if we have f of the quantity x minus a constant, the graph is actually shifted right. So going back to our example, we're given that g of x is equal to f of the quantity x plus three minus two. So because we have minus a constant here, or we can say because d is equal to negative two, g is going to be shifted down two units from f of x. So let's say shift down two units. And because we have f of the quantity x plus three, referring back to our notes, c would be equal to positive three. And because c is positive three, g of x is going to be shifted left three units. So we'll have a shift left three units. Now to perform this transformation, what we're going to do is identify five key points on the parent function f of x. Then we'll take each of those five points and shift each one down two units and left three units. Let's find the coordinates for five key points. So we'll use this point, this point, this point, the vertex, this point, and this point. All these points have nice coordinates. We have the origin, 0 comma 0. This point would have the ordered pair 1 comma 1, and this point would have the ordered pair 2 comma 4. Here we have negative 2 comma 4, and here we have negative 1 comma 1. So now we'll take each of these five points, shift it down two units, and left three units. Let's start with the vertex, so down two, and left three. This point is the vertex for g of x. Now we'll take this point, down two, left three. This point is on g of x, down two, left three. This point is on g of x. Now we have two more points to shift. Take this point, shift it down two units, and left three units. This point is on g of x. And finally this point, shift it down two, left three. And now we have five points that we know are on g of x, so now we can accurately graph g of x. g of x will look like this. Notice how the blue graph is g of x because we took f of x, shifted it down two units, and left three units. Let's look at a second example. Here we're given g of x equals f of the quantity x minus two plus four. So because of the plus four here on the end, 
D is equal to four, and therefore we have a shift up four units. And because we have F of the quantity X minus two, C is equal to negative two, which means we're going to have a shift right two units. Let's go ahead and use the same five key points as we did in the first example. And we actually don't need the coordinates of these points as long as you take each point, shift it up four units, and write two units. So let's take this point here, we'll shift it up four units, and write two units. So this point here is on g of x. Let's do the same with this point here, up four, write two. Take this point, shift it up four, Right two, up four, right two, and find the vertex, up four, right two. Let's go ahead and clear our work. The graph of g of x passes through these five points and would look like this. The graph of g of x is f of x shifted up four units and right two units. I hope you found this helpful.